Hey everyone, we're going to focus today on Unit 1.3, which is exploring functions using the graphing calculator. Um, and the focus for a lot of what we're going to do is going to be using the app on the table and the, the graphing portion of the graphing calculator to help us find certain answers. Because um, again, functions can be graphs, they can be tables, and they can be equations. Um, so for this first one, we have the function f, which is 1 half x plus 2. So I'm going to turn my calculator on, go to y equals, and I'm going to type in that 1 half x plus 2. And next thing I'm going to do is, one of the most important things when you're taking the test is you want to go to mode, and you want to make sure that this G dash T is highlighted. Um, that can help especially with graphing because it gives you, if you go to second graph, it gives you the line and it gives you the table, but it also gives you a cursor. You can see this little cursor here, the X, that pretty much just tells you where to put the points at. Okay? Now you do have to do the counting and put the point exactly, but at least for that part it'll help you with finding that other thing. So first part for A, it's asking us to evaluate these three. Now I can use the table to get these answers. So if we want f of negative 6, what I would want to do, because negative 6 is the x value, because it's f of x, like it is in the equation, I'm going to go to negative 6. And then it gives me an answer of negative 1. So again, this is equal to a point on the graph, which is negative 6, negative 1. Then we got 0, and 0 is on here, so we got 0, 2. So when we have f of 0, 2 is the answer we get out. And then the last one is 8. And I'm going to do this one a little differently. I could go to 8 on the table, but if I'm going to do f of 8, you know, I could just as easily find it by taking the equation and putting 8 in for x. And if I wanted to type that in, I'm not going to type it in y equals, I'm going to go to the calculator's regular screen and type in 1 divided by 2 parentheses 8 plus 2. Now if I went back to, we get 6 for the answer. If I go back to 8 on the table, you're going to see that I'm going to get 6 as an answer. So when we have f of 8, 6 is the answer we get out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start graphing some of these points. And it's always a good idea if you're stuck, start around 0. So we've got 0, 2, which would be just up 2, which is one that a lot of people screw up. And then I'm going to skip 1, 2.5. I'm going to go to 2, 3. Stick with ones that are two whole numbers. We've got 4, 4. we got also 6, 5. Now, because I finished that side of the graph, I'm going to go in the other direction. So let's go some negatives up there. we got negative 2, 1. And you can kind of see a pattern because it's linear. It's going up by the same amount each time. Then you go ahead and you draw the graph from there. And that's going to be f of x. You can also write the equation, but f of x does suffice. Now, they want us to explore the table to determine the value of x for which it's 11. So, really what they want us to do, again, 11 is the output. It's the y value. So what we got to do is figure out when our what x value gives us 11 out. So you want to search the table for that. And then you end up with x is 18. So the value of x, because they're asking for the value of x, when x is 18, then you get 11 out as an answer. Now, you can go ahead and fill in the table. Okay. Um, based on the values you saw on the table for this example. And then for the rest of this question, I want you to do part D. So you're going to graph G of X. And then you can do the same thing, label it G of X. And then it says for part E to show the point that you found that's a solution to both. So which point, or in this case, a solution in this case would be the intersection. So which point do they cross at? So you can pause the video now and then do part D and E, and then have me check it in class. 
Now if you've finished parts D and E, let's go on to the back of this page. We're going to do some of the examples in the back. Okay. And again, we have another function. And they use y equals, which is the same. Okay. Now they only want us to do this from the interval of negative 1 to 4. Now we see that sometimes on the test, and pretty much what that means is that's the table values that you're going to focus on. So create a table of values. Well, the table of values is going to be from negative 1 up to 4. So you're going to have those six values that you're going to graph. So you can type this in the calculator. And if you're stuck on how to do that, I'll show you right now. You go to y equals. Just be careful. You want everything to look exactly the same. x minus 1, and then you square button. And then you got minus 4. So you can go from there and fill in the table and then graph the points over there. Okay. Now for part C, they're asking for a minimum and, and maximum values on this interval. So what would you see for minimum and maximum when you look at that, the min and the max, you really want to focus on the y values in the table. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm going to take a second and pause this, and I'm going to come back with the graph on there. Uh, but like I said, I'd like you to do parts A and B, and then we'll talk about the rest of the parts together. So now I have the graph finished for exercise two, and we're going to talk about the other parts, C, D, E, and F. Um, and it says for C, what are the functions minimum and maximums? So like I said, you want to use the Y values. So in this case, the minimum is going to be at this point, which in case of the quadrilateral would be called a vertex. And that minimum is at negative 4. And the maximum is going to be the highest point, which in this case would be up here, which would be positive 5. So I'm using the y-axis, I'm using the y-axis here to help me determine those minimum and maximum values. Now they want an interval, so when the graph is negative. So the graph is negative from negative 1. Once it goes greater than negative 1, up into the number 3. So we have a negative interval from negative 1 to 3, and I'm not going to include those because those two numbers are, in fact, the zeros. So we talk about, and we'll see this in Unit 3, we'll talk about zeros, which are basically roots of the equation. And when is the function increasing? So the function's increasing from the point it hits the bottom, which would be here, all the way up to the top and the end of the graph. So that graph is increasing from 1. Once 1 starts for the x values, all the way up to, in this case, number 4. And then for the last part, for f, how can this graph help you to solve the equation? Well, in this case, when we get negative 3 out, negative 3 is the y values. So if we go to the y as negative 3 line, which is here, we end up with two answers. So if you look across this line, you're going to see two answers when the graph equals negative 3. And that happens when x is 0, and x is 2. So if I am to put in 0 and 2 in for x here, that means I'm going to get negative 3 out as an answer because that's the output. Okay. So now there's one question, exercise 3, that I want you to try. Um, and that pretty much just involves substitution. You want to take the x and the y values and see if those graphs contain that point and you want both of the graphs to contain that point. And after that, please start the homework questions, and if you have questions in class, please ask me.